I'm wondering, though, if you go back 14 months ago when Colin Kaepernick did this, and when he started to do it, nobody noticed it. Then it started to gain a little speed there, and then people thought he'd never get in a game. Then he got into a game, and then he actually put up some decent numbers. But then I fast forward to the summer and the beginning of this season. If somebody picked up Colin Kaepernick and he was on a team, yeah. I wonder if we would have gotten anywhere near where we are now. That that it almost felt like everybody was waiting. Why doesn't he get a job? And then if he got a job, yeah. then this was going to it was going to take a little bit of the steam out of it, and maybe it would go away. Do you do you think that that timeline you know, is fair? Yeah, yes, absolutely. I've given this so much thought. Colin Kaepernick not being in the league uh, was the match, and Donald Trump poured gasoline all over it. If Colin Kaepernick is in the league, maybe Donald Trump still pours gasoline, but it's, it's still, it would be unclear about how a flame it would be because the players already had it inside them that something was very wrong with Colin Kaepernick not being in the NFL because it strikes at the heart of what they're told about the National Football League, that it's a meritocracy, and if you're out there, it means you're the best. And the other thing I can tell you, Dan, from, from my own reporting is that last year, even if Colin Kaepernick's message about criminal justice and police brutality did not resonate with every player, even if only a handful of players took a knee or protested during the anthem, his courage in doing it week in, week out, and his reputation in the league, I mean, was platinum plated. I mean, that's why the 49ers voted to give him their courage award. That's why coaches like John Harbaugh, who was a, a Trump supporter, uh, spoke out for Colin Kaepernick and said that he belongs in the league. I mean, his reputation, independent of the politics, was so burnished last year that to not see him on a team was something that, that really, I think, bothered so many players. And then players like Michael Bennett, like the Cleveland Browns, like Marshawn Lynch, like Malcolm Jenkins, they kept that flame lit, even if it was just embers mm -hmm. heading into this season. This idea, just, just embers. And then Trump came in and he thought to himself, you know, this, I'm going to attack Malcolm Jenkins. I'm going to attack Michael Bennett. And that's the other thing that Trump did not understand because he doesn't understand the NFL. And this is something that even the most right-wing coaches and executives in the NFL understand. And that's that players like Malcolm Jenkins and Michael Bennett, they may have politics that, that they disagree with, but they're also the most respected people in the locker room. They're the most eloquent people. They're the people that the people in the locker room rally around. They're the people who are credits to their organization and to their team. I was at the Seattle game last week, first home game for the Seahawks, and they made sure that Michael Bennett was the first person to come out of the locker room, no helmet on, to greet every player who came out. They had Michael Bennett in the middle of the huddle, you know, the Drew Brees-style guy who's in the middle psyching everybody up and, and as everybody moves side to side. They gave that position to Michael Bennett because they know what he means to that locker room, independent of politics. And that's something Donald Trump clearly did not understand. I think he overstepped. I think that's why he was backtracking ferociously yesterday about the question of boycotting the NFL. And I, I think that, you know, we should look at yesterday in a lot of respects as a victory uh, for free speech and dissent in, in the face of having a president of the United States calling for people to lose their jobs. And that terrifies me. If Trump had did that, if Barack Obama had done that, um, I don't care. Abraham Lincoln, I would, I would be in front of the House with a picket sign because there's no way someone in that position should be calling for anybody to lose their job in this country or using that kind of language to refer to people's mothers. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.